MinSwap V2 has launched and this is really exciting. We're going to see lots of speed optimization. We're going to see cheaper fees. We see composability of the decks, all sorts of things that make Cardano DeFi so much better than other DeFi ecosystems. I have Adrian, I have Batter and I have Long from the MinSwap team joining me on this episode to talk through everything about the MinSwap V2 launch. Super excited about this one, guys. Welcome to the podcast. Hi. Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Super happy to be here. <laughs> okay. It's been a long time since I've had a chat with you guys, and there's been a lot happening. But first off, I'd like to congratulate MinSwap for winning, winning another uh, Cardano Summit uh, award. Um, and that's when you guys first announced MinSwap V2, and you put out this video with all these really cool features, and you know, it got everyone really hyped up and excited about it. What can we expect in MinSwap V2 um, now that's launched? So what can you expect for MinSwap V2? A ton of things and improvements. If you want like the more details, we have an article that we released called MinSwap V2 throughput and new features. So the main highlight is the throughput increasement because we are leveraging Plutus V2 and ICANN to get uh, up to 10 times more throughput than the MinSwap V1, which, you know, it's had its times of congestion. If you remember meme coin mania, that wasn't very fun to trade on MinSwap. So 10x improvement should do the trick to, to make that experience better in times of high load. And then we have a ton of new features. Maybe we can dive into them deeper. Um, one of them, for example, is the auto routing. So we call it like an aggregator within the DEX. So uh, whenever you want to trade one token for another, it will look for the cheapest route to do so within MinSwap. So for example, combining different pools, different liquidity pools, or combining even different smart contracts, like you can use MinSwap B1 and MinSwap B2 at the same time. So that's a very exciting one for the users. Then we have a ton of advanced orders. Uh, we have fill or kill, we have partial orders, we have stop losses. We also have one cancel the other or OCO. Um, which is kind of a combination of a limit order and the stop loss. So, yeah, we're packed. We're packed for MinSwap B2. Maybe we can dive deeper into them. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about some of those advanced trading features. There's so many things there that we can play around with uh, to uh, really advance our uh, trading on the DEX itself. So I'm really excited about that kind of stuff and that um, that OC. O one like other cancel order is, is is that what it stands for? <laughs> I have played around with that on testnet, and you know I absolutely love that functionality. Yep, it's called the one cancel the other order, and it's pretty used in trading if you're using centralized exchanges or other types of more advanced trading. You can prepare for different scenarios. Um, you can just fill put the order, you go away, you do your thing, and if it reaches a certain price, it will sell either um, stop loss or also a limit order to take profit. Now, the other thing that was mentioned was the, the 10x increase uh, from all the orders. And I know like uh, the, the on the batch side of things as well, we can cram in a lot more orders on that side. How, how was this all done? Like, uh, or was it all Aiken and optimization of the smart contracts? Like, uh, th this seems like a massive increase. Yeah, it was a, a, a very big increase. Increase. I can uh, dive more into the detail. Uh, so the first is uh, I think a Bluetooth V2, and I can uh, it reduce the cost for uh, uh, deserializing the datum. Uh, secondly, we use the field optimization technique. Uh, the most, uh, the biggest one is uh, uh, withdraw withdraw script uh, technique, and also we. Uh, Sorted uh, the order by uh, the uh, hash. So in V1, uh, actually in V1, if you don't care about the FIFO order, you can put eight order in one batch. But because we uh, we have to keep maintain the FIFO order, then we uh, generally put uh, around uh, three to four order before uh, the before it became non FIFO, and then we have to cut the cut the batch shortly before the maximum uh, limit. But on V2, uh, because we are we sort the order by the take hash, uh, we can put as many order in one batch as possible. The maximum uh, throughput in V2 is 36 order per batch, 
but uh, uh, when we launch we configure it to be 30 to make it easier to for the uh, mesh transaction to fit into the block that's pr- that's pretty cool so wh- why the change from uh, fifo to hash uh so it's still fifo but uh so um uh, let me uh, rephrase. So in V1, in order to be V4, you have to like cut the batch shortly before the maximum, right? The maximum is eight. But like uh, when the batch got like three or four order, then uh, the order will uh, like it will be shuffle. Uh, it, will be, it will be reorder itself within the batch. So we have to cut it shortly before the limit. But on V2, uh, we put like a, a technique there. So uh, you can put as many order you can as possible without violating the fee for ordering. Ah, right. Okay, that's really good to know. Uh, n- nice little techniques there that you're mm-hmm. taking advantage of. So on V2, we also use a reference script. So the reference script it uh, we reduce the transaction. It it um, it doesn't uh, directly increase the throughput. But it, it in, indirectly increases throughput because it decreases the transaction size. So the transaction will be easier to fit into one block. Uh, hence, the, uh, the swap will be faster to execute because the transaction is lighter, so it will be easier to fit into one block. And we also uh, help with sustainability a lot because uh, we don't have to store the same uh, script, uh, the same script uh, uh, again, again, like thousands of times in the NodeDB. We just need to store the script once and then. Uh, in uh, every later session, we'll refer uh, that. Now, one of the criticisms from the community is like, uh, you know, when V2, because like uh, we've, we've seen Nike launch and there was a lot of congestion again on the chain because of a lot of people coming in and trying to trade. And, uh, you know, I've, I've seen all these tweets come out recently and say, oh, come on, MinSwap, launch V2. We need these uh, new updated smart contracts out there. Well, what has taken you guys so long to get to this point? Yeah, we all have seen those t- tweets and it put a bit pressure on the team. I mean, we try to go faster as we can. But keep in mind, like with V2, we've been double audited with Certic and also in Stasia Labs, and it takes time. And also another re-audit to kind of uh, review what's been audited by, by, the second, uh, uh, by the second audit company. So, I mean, from Minswap V2, we draws like a lot of lessons from the V1. So when we released V1, we actually want the priority was that want to be quick to the market and we want to be like kind of prove that actually there is something that can be done on Cardano and you can trade and everything. And But in V2, given a lot at stakes, like we have a lot of liquidity and stuff, we want to make sure that the V2 is secure as much as possible. So for us, was the security really the number one priority? So what we end up doing is double auditing and also like we kind of open sourced ahead of deployments and we launched like a bounty, which is like 99,000 ADA for anyone who will be able to help like review the smart contracts and see if there is any vulnerability in that. So that's made us took a lot of time. But I mean, for that question of when V2, so I think it's the first time we're going to break it. It's this week. <laughs> 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 yeah okay brilliant brilliant yeah so double audit certic and anastasia labs plus the open source smart contracts online so people could probe it and i, I think i i swear i saw a tweet from micah from butane saying that he uh, managed to find some something in the bug bounty and uh, claim a little bit it's good to have that open there so that community members can dive in claim those bug bounties but then also provide you guys with some of that feedback uh to improve the protocol and um, you know find potential security vulnerabilities uh yeah uh we have uh two finding uh so we can find two of them but like uh, one finding is found by another another um person before mika um, so we have uh, we given uh, the bounty to two people. So one is Mika and another is uh, Bounty Hunter. Um, so one one uh, finding is a uh, medium medium uh, like medium level kind of uh, vulnerability, and another is minor level. Now, w- with a lot of these um, uh, audits and security vulnerabilities that come through, and uh, you know you, you guys have worked through and updated things, what what 
what happens if someone finds something afterwards, after you guys have launched? Uh, what, what's the process there of like upgrading a smart contract if something's found afterwards? Uh, there is, uh, the smart contract is not upgradable for obvious security reason. Uh, it needs to be um, trustless. So uh, the, the user, they don't need to trust that uh, the team doesn't run away with the fund. So it's not upgradable. And to upgrade the contract, uh, user have to uh, either manually withdraw the fund and deposit into the new contract, or the V2 contract also support more uh, interoperability so there can be like one-click migration with uh, V2, one-click translate migration with V2. From V1 to V2, though, uh, the, mig- the one-click migration is trusted, but from V2 to V3 or after that is a translate migration. Yeah, that, that, that's probably one of the really big things that um, comes with this launch. It's uh, migrating the liquidity from the V1 pools and uh, the V1 smart contracts to V2. It's a process that people have to do. Um, and I, I did a video that covered this on the test net and I was playing around with it, trying to upgrade that um, uh, liquidity. It was an easy, smooth process. And you know, one of the things I loved is being able to select all migrate and just upgrade all of my um, uh, V1 smart contracts to V2. So it's a really easy process to do, but it, it is something that people need to be aware of because um, uh, the V1 uh, liquidity pools will still be interacting with the V1 smart contracts, right? And it won't get this speed optimization that you guys are getting with uh, everything else that you're launching at the moment. Um, yeah, it's only, um, uh, it's only the, our auto router the, they will route the trade through the most, uh, like the best price pool. So if V1 has more liquidity than V2, then order will still be routed through a V1. So that's why we urge everyone, I would like to urge everyone to migrate to V2 as soon as possible. Yeah, I, I guess a uh, <laughs> priority is to get the best trade possible, not uh, the fastest trade possible. So uh, it's, it's, it's still um, uh, in the benefit for the uh, trader itself. So that's uh, kind of important. Um, now, You guys also have a few catalyst proposals, uh, but some of the things that you guys are bringing in is uh, really, really interesting. One of them, smart tokens, another one, iOS app. And I think these things are really beneficial for the community because it changes the way DeFi works. What can we expect from the ISO app? Uh, We were doing some research about where the usage from MinSwap is coming from. And what we saw is that um, almost one third of the users are using MinSwap from Safari. And that must not be a great experience, you know, if you use Safari. So we thought about launching an iOS app to make that way better. It takes some extra effort. That's why we're doing a Catalyst proposal. Uh, but it will be a pretty similar experience to the Android app we have already or to using uh, MinSwap on the desktop. Um, we aren't changing that much, but we want to focus more on mobile because we know like the majority of users of MinSwap are actually on mobile. So yeah, that's a big priority for us in the future. I want to stroll back a little bit in memory lane. And, you know, I've been along MinSwap since the very beginning, before you guys launched, during the test net, everything that you guys have done from the FISO and all these other aspects. Um, I have to ask, between like all three of you, what has been the biggest highlights from the you know conception of MinSwap to the launch of V2? What has been the biggest moments for for you guys in your opinions? Probably the the migration, the vulnerability, and the migration. Yeah, I think we learned a lot from that, and I think we even like recognized like how the team is structured and how the team is helping everyone and it's like how team members like helping everyone and i think that that moment was uh, kind of uh, special for us as well given a lot a lot of liquidity was at stake but yeah man when you look at all of those back and then you just you know it's something in the past but we learned a lot from it but i think um, also v2 launch will be also uh, memorable for everyone for us given how much we put in efforts and how much we put like uh, to make sure that uh, DeFi 2.0 or whatever narrative is in place. So we try to maximum like to 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 improve on 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 tr- on, on our platform and on the decks on the smart contracts. Uh, 
which is something that we really like to see how people gonna you know trade with it play with it how how, how it's gonna go for them as well I think for me, uh, one of my highlights was during meme coin mania and watching the stats and liquidity and TBL of uh, the whole DeFi ecosystem go crazy and MinSwap just getting bigger and bigger uh, with trading volumes. Uh, that, that, that time was absolutely insane to watch. And I, I think that was probably my most memorable uh, part of a uh, MinSwap uh, since launch. Yeah, it's also memorable for me because I have to keep the server up. Uh, but now we have learned a lot uh, of uh, scaling from that. Uh, so uh, we definitely put, uh, put some effort into the infrastructure to make it uh, more scalable. So if we have like, another meme coin, then yeah, uh, it will be better. So Bader, you just mentioned uh, Cardano DeFi 2.0. What exactly did you mean by that? Yeah, so that Cardano DeFi 2.0 is like a, a narrative of new iteration of the apps that are like much faster and they're like composable, you know, decentralized and also cheaper. And, you know, there is this whole, uh, 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 you know, this whole whole narrative is meant to make to make even like protocols interact with each other as well. So you have, uh, 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 this is what we tried at least to put as MinSwap V2 and try to make sure at least we hit all of these, these areas, starting from, you know, having a much, uh, faster throughput to uh, being able to, you know, build on the top of MinSwap itself. Yeah, so for example, um, so DeFi 2.0 crypto is all about narratives, right? And Cardano, sometimes we've seen, we've been lacking a little bit of narratives. So I think it's a great idea to make DeFi 2.0 a narrative. So we had DeFi 1.0, it's the DEXs that launched like almost two years ago. And yeah, they were great tech, but probably way slower and more expensive than what we can do now. So Minsoa V2 is part of the Cardano DeFi 2.0 narrative, way faster, as we said, 10x, way cheaper. Actually, uh, when we are launching Minsoa V2, there will be a 50% discount on batcher fees as part of the launch for three months, nice. three months, Nice. then it will be evaluated. but. We definitely want to be part of that narrative. So it's faster, it's cheaper. MinSwap V2 is also pretty composable. So for example, um, an order can be owned by a wallet or a contract. So that allows for programmability and we can also chain orders. For example, you can sub and stake into a farm in certain cases in one transaction. So yeah, it's part of this um, narrative of uh, Cardano DeFi evolving and becoming way better. So when new users come, um, we will definitely have quite some tools available to to try to get them to stick. Given like uh, how V2 is structured, you can basically, uh, if you are another protocol, like it can be a DEX aggregator or something, you easily can do much more than what you can do in V1. So you can basically uh, have, uh, as a dev, you have much flexibility on what you can build on the top of, v, of V2 smart contracts. And this all ties into the MinSwap SDK and uh, all these other things and dev tools that you're going to build for the community. So really exciting for any other developer that's coming in at the moment. Uh, they'll be able to leverage all this stuff and build some really cool things on top of the MinSwap protocol and uh, build some amazing things elsewhere. So who knows what's going to happen? So really the SDK, uh, uh, we hope that um, um, the uh, other projects and uh, can build integration and other apps on top of MinSwap to build a, a wider MinSwap ecosystem. So we will also uh, open source uh, many of our internal code and uh, um, also build the SDK uh, to make it easier for integration. Yeah, and just want to say thanks a lot for having us. And MinSwap to have lots of exciting features that we mentioned. Uh, throughput, advanced orders. We also have dynamic fees, which we didn't talk much about, but that will be great for anyone who wants to be a liquidity provider and wants to try to uh, not suffer as much from impermanent loss. That is our uh, approach at trying to palliate that a little bit. Um, dynamic fees. We have some articles that will take a little bit more time, won't be available at launch, but that's some of the steps we're taking to make liquidity providing more attractive Attractive because uh, the DEX depends, the heart of the DEX is the liquidity providers. 
And yeah, we have composability. We have also something we call sustainability, where Minsa V2 contracts are much lighter in size. So they you, you don't need to increase your node um, capacity in order to, to run Minsa V2. So that's good for the blockchain as a whole, for Cardano. And composability, as we mentioned. So yeah, I hope that you all use Minsa V2, migrate your liquidity. And soon, yeah, we will be launching more and more features iteratively and hope that you enjoy all of them. So I highly recommend everyone check out Minswap V2 if you haven't done so already. I'll put links and references, everything that you guys need to know about the protocol, everything that they've built, all the articles, all the testing that they've done. This is absolutely brilliant. And it's finally good to have the biggest DEX on Cardano upgraded to Plutus V2, the brand new smart contracts, where it takes advantage of reference scripts, inline datums, and so much more speed optimizations. And of course, they're doing with this with Aiken as well. So it makes it even better. Uh, brilliant. Can't, can't ask for anything more than this. Go check it out, guys. If you do have liquidity in those uh, V1 protocols, those liquidity pools, please consider upgrading them as well to V2 so everyone can benefit from the fast transactions, the lower fees, and everything else around it too. So awesome, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please consider giving me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, click on the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.